Well, God bless you and thank you for tuning in to another Decision Time broadcast. Certainly this is the day that the Lord have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Elder Ernest Dunn and I'm only here for a brief moment just to introduce our messenger in the message. It's coming through Elder Harold Rapp Jr. and his message is simply titled, Life. Well, you are in for a uh, treat on today. Whatever you do, don't change that dial. The Word of God is up next. Today we're going to talk about a sensitive subject, if you would pray with me. Sensitive subject. It's only one word, amen, that I'm going to leave with you as a thought. And as I describe it, I want you to take it in in your mind. And if, if you have an idea what I'm talking about, you can nod your head and raise your hand. But it's something that we must discuss. We have a tendency to ignore it. It's a subject that affects us in many ways. It can cause fear, grief. It can cause anxiety, pain, sorrow, and uncertainty. It impacts both young and old, rich and poor, and regardless of wealth or lack thereof, everyone confronts it in some manner daily for it is all around us. Some turn to isolation while others may congregate to reflect and even celebrate. From it we can find inspiration or devastation, hope or despair. Trying to cope with its effects can lead to counseling while others try to manage day by day on their own. Although we cannot ignore it, we must become more diligent in the ways we approach it, as God's word has made it a promise to us. Learning his way to face it is essential for our personal benefit and serve as an example to others. Because through it, we face our destiny. Show of hands, anyone knows what we're talking about today? What are we talking about? Speak up. That's what it sounds like, but we're talking about life. That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? But in truth being told, we're talking about life. It sounds like death. But we're talking about life. Very popular passage of scripture, John chapter 10, verse 10. It is time for us to understand there are things that we have been allowed to believe over the years that we must bring to the forefront. Truth being told, death is easy. Living is the challenge. That you have no power over. Life is something that we have to face daily. Death will inevitably come. And some of us, we have fear of it. And the question would be why? When it's not death that establishes what happens next, but life. The way I live it, the way you live it. Life. And again, very familiar passage of scripture, it reads, the thief comes not but for to do what? To steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have what? Life, and that they might have it how? More abundantly. So 
So if I was to change the introduction by saying that life affects us in many ways, would you not agree it can cause fear? Life can cause grief. Life can cause anxiety, pain, sorrow, and uncertainty. Will you not agree that life impacts both young and old, rich and poor, regardless of wealth or lack thereof? Everyone, if you have breath, confronts it in some manner daily, for it is all around us. In life, some turn to isolation, while others may congregate to reflect and even celebrate. Are we not doing that right here, right now? And again, from it, we can find inspiration or devastation, hope or despair from life. life. And trying to cope with life can lead to counseling, while others, again, they try to manage it in their own way. Day by day, thinking they have to face it on their own. But we cannot ignore life. We must not ignore life because by the word of God he said that he came that we might have life and more abundantly not not just the life to come but life here and now now but we face it differently and one of the main problems and I'm just going to be me and I'm just going to be honest how as believers that so many of us fear that word death. And go through so many things to prep, uh, prep for it. People encourage us, make sure that you have life insurance. When the truth being told is death insurance. It is interesting to note that some people brag on the amount of insurance they take out as if they're going to benefit from it. But one of the greatest challenges that I believe we really do face is that we're not confident in our life assurance. We're not confident in our life assurance. Again, you have no power over death. But the word of God says it is appointed and you're not going to miss it. It's appointed. For you, for me, it's appointed. Us, for us to die. And then after what? Judgment doesn't come because of death. It comes as a result of our life. That's right. That's good. Because of our life. So what is life by man's definition? It is the quality that distinguishes a vital and functioning being from a dead body. It is a principle or a force that is considered to underlie the distinctive quality of animate beings. The sequence of physical and mental experiences that make up the existence of an individual. One or more aspects of the process of living. Now God's definition coming from Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 in the first part of verse 20 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. It's the word of God. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. 
that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days. He is your life, my life, and the length of your days. Again, we don't have to entertain death. We don't even have to fear death and not supposed to because it's an enemy of God. And the one that controls it is the Lord himself because by his own declaration, he said he holds the keys yes. Right. Yes. of hell yes. and death. Yes. And by his word, he said the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. It's his enemy. It's our enemy. Amen. And for us, it's the transition from this life to the next. That song, I, I, I love that song. I just want to praise you. How long? Forever. Forever. Amen. That means now and in the life to come. So I understand that there's going to be, and we must understand, there's going to be a transition from this life to the next. But how you live it determines what happens next. Every single day determines what the final outcome for each of us is going to be. This is something that God has invested in us and we take it for granted. We decide what we're going to do for ourselves. How I'm going to enjoy this day. Did you take the time to find out from him what his plans are for you for that day? Life. This is life, and this is his life that he has graciously given us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. If you then be risen with Christ, and I said if. Remember, I have on condition that. You be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. He says, set your affection on things where? Above and not on things where? On the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with God in Christ. When Christ who is our life shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Ecclesiastes 6 and 20 says, For who knows what is good for a man in this life? Yeah. All the days of his vain life, which he spends as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? And the response to that comes from Acts 17, verse 27, the first part of verse 28, that they should seek the Lord if haply or by chance they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Why? For in him we live and move and have our being. The word of God says we're no longer our own, we have been bought with the price and we've been instructed to do what glorify God in our body and spirit which are his and how do we do that in life this life first John 5 and 20 says and we know that the son of God is come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. 
Why? Because according to John chapter 1 verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. There is no life separate from Jesus. There is no life separate from Jesus. If in him we live, move, and have our being without him, yes, you may think that you have life. But as the saying goes, you're a dead person walking. People talk about zombies and they're around us every single day. People talk about aliens, and yes, they're around us every single day, too, because we're them. Yes. Word of God says we're in the world. Yes. Sounds like alien to me. <laughs> we must, we must, if we say that we love the Lord in the manner which we do, Death should not be in the forefront of our minds, even though, yes, it's all around us. But we must, must take every single opportunity day by day to live this life as God had purposed it and designed it. With the expectations, yes, we're going to have situations and circumstances. Jesus made it known to us. The righteous shall suffer persecution. He told his disciples, the world is going to hate you because they hate me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The trying of our faith. We have all these challenges that the word of God has made known to us. But we must stand upon the assurance and guarantee that Jesus said he came that we might have life. And that more abundantly that we will be victorious yes. over the challenges of life. Why? Because by his word, he said he has made us more than conquerors right. through him that loves us. What do we conquer? The situations and circumstances that we face in life. Right. And yes, the challenges sometimes can be overbearing. And almost seemingly push us to our limits. But 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 and 5 says, For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. And Paul says in verse 5, Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Because in the end, nobody's going to testify for you but you. And know and how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates you have to know who you are and don't lie to yourself because the devil knows and what really should disturb you that much more to live it in the way that he says is because he knows God knows Again, a very familiar passage of scripture, the eyes of the Lord are where? Beholding the evil and the good. Sometimes you think when your door is closed and you got the lights off and you're on the phone talking about this and talking about that, that the eyes of the Lord are not there. You drive in your car or in your home or on your job and all these other different places and you do this and you do that, which is completely uncharacteristic of what we see here in this setting, and we think that God don't know. 
but understand you, you're important enough that there's an angel that's recording a book. You popular. You got your own biography. That's right. You got a book. It's not going to be a bestseller. But I tell you what, it's going to be counted as evidence. It's going to either persecute you, or it's going to defend you. Not your death, but your life. And we have to understand, just as we come together at times of sorrow, we must continue even the more to come together in times of jubilation. Because even as we go through, we'll help us how? One to another. It's a part of life. It's what's required of us. The enemy would want us to be isolated. Oh, woe is me. Nobody else cares. When we say that and we say being saved, and then Jesus already made it known to us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I am with you even when. So when we say these things that I'm by myself and you're saying you saved, guess what? You just lied. And you lied on him. You lied on him. And we say we have the spirit of God and then all of a sudden we're, we're in a home by ourselves and oh, ain't nobody here but me. It's not the truth because we don't understand the life that the Lord has truly afforded us. We, we, we quote the word of God, the angels of the Lord are where? It can't where? Do we really believe it? It's time out to stop all this talking and quoting without believing what God has said. And we have to stand upon his word, for his word is truth. Paul said it best, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. You can have such a relationship with the Lord that when death is coming, he'll let you know. He will let you know. It's all throughout scripture. And he, sometimes he let others know. Ask Elijah. Elisha is spending time with him. Trying to glean from him. And be mentored by him. And then the other prophets of Israel come around and say, you know that your master is going to be taken from you, right? And he's like, yeah, I know. They knew, and they knew how. But only one person has full power and authority over his physical being, and that was none other than Jesus himself. Chapter 10, verse 17. Jesus says, therefore does my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Verse 18, he said, no man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Jesus said, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. Why this commandment have I received of my father. And again, Jesus was the only person in scripture that would separate his three person self. 
Let's go to the word of God. On the cross, he said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. So we know where his spirit was. We knew that his body was laid where? In a tomb. But his soul was where for three days? In the lower parts of the earth. Thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. His body would not even decompose. And then coming back, after he was first seen by Mary Magdalene, he said, don't touch me. He's speaking. She sees him. He said, for I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. So clearly, she's looking at a body. He has emotion, so he has acquired his soul with his body. But yet he has to go back to his father to receive his Somebody said it. That's good. Don't touch And he's letting us know what lies ahead for us because this cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There's no do overs. No appeals. No second chance. No phone a friend. None of that. You only have this time in this flesh one life. One life that he has given for us. Well, here we are again. We are at the close of another broadcast, but we're not out of word. And unfortunately, we have to um, cut it off at this point and say we'll see you again next week but until then you can see this message and hear it again on our website www.israelitekojic.org or our YouTube channel Decision Time Enterprises uh, we pray that you were blessed and we pray that you even encourage someone to hear this for themselves because we all need to hear something that will encourage us in this life well, in the words of our pastor, you have a miracle in your mouth. God bless you.